Dreallday.com. on Dreallday.com, BallOverseas.com. This video uh, is kind of touching on, overlapping with a subject that I talked about in a previous video where I was answering a question that someone had posted in the comments, which is why I go through a placement program or a, a academy or an agent even if I can just contact the team directly and sell myself. But the question here is, how do you contact professional basketball teams? If you just want to contact the team yourself and bypass the whole middleman situation, which I explained in the previous video. So if you didn't see that video, please go watch that video so you understand what I'm talking about here. How do you contact teams directly? Let me answer that question. Well, the same way you would contact, because you would contact the team overseas the same way that you would contact, you know, the, the New York Knicks or the Brooklyn Nets or the Miami Heat. You just look up their website. If you can find it, Google the team, whatever it is, and they're going to have information on there. It'll have their, their website will be on there. Excuse me, all their social media links will be on there, their Twitter, their Instagram, Facebook, whatever they got. They'll probably have some kind of general contact email address or even a phone number. And you can email them, you can phone them directly and see if you can get lucky. Here's the thing that you need to understand that I explained in the previous video. Again, as I said, this is going to overlap some of the points is these teams understand that players like you have this idea. Why don't I just contact the team directly, find their contact information and see if I can you know, make something happen that way. And this is why teams put up barriers to entry the same way that because a lot of you don't really you probably don't follow overseas basketball, especially you Americans, the same way that you follow, let's say, NBA basketball. So you might think that because it's in Europe and it's overseas and you don't know much about that world, you might think that these people are maybe um, not as sharp as you, not as smart as you, or that they don't understand things the way that we understand things. Let me explain something to you. They are. All right, they're just as smart, just as sharp, maybe smarter than you are, and they have anticipated the same things that you're thinking. They've already thought about it, okay? You would not be the first player in the world to try to contact teams directly and get a job. Just imagine how silly does it sound if I said, you know, I want to play for the, the Knicks. So I'm going to just I'm going to send a tweet to the Knicks Twitter or I'm going to DM the Knicks on Instagram or I'm going to try to call the Knicks main 1-800 phone number and try to sell myself to get a job. Like, you know, that sounds ridiculous, right? Because, you know, the person who answers the phone at the New York Knicks is like some receptionist who's working as an intern. And there's like 10 layers of people between them and a person who could actually make a basketball personnel decision. You will never get through to them calling directly to their 1-800 number. That will not work. And with overseas teams, they might not have as many layers as the New York Knicks. They might not have 10 layers, but they might have five. They might have three. And for you to get through those three layers, even to get to a person who could actually do something for you and to be able to sell yourself through a, an email or a telephone call, it's probably not going to happen. What you need to understand about professional sports is that often when a team makes a decision to sign a player, is not just one person who makes that decision. It's several people who are involved in the decision-making process. So maybe one person will see your, your email. Let's just say that you did this, right? And you emailed the team and you got lucky and you got, your email got read by somebody who actually has some power or actually has a say at least. They got a voice in it, the conversation. They like your video. They think you're actually good. They think you might be the next you know, Derek Rose before he hurt his knee. And they think you're nice. All right, now what they're going to do is forward your email to somebody else who's in the decision-making process. Now that person, they see your email and they're like, okay, cool. But they also got 10 other emails that came directly from people that they trust. Like I talked about in another other video, those agents, those scouts, those managers, other people in the organization who actually saw five other guys. They saw five other players who are competing for the same job that you want. They saw them play in person in Europe and they never seen you play in person. And they got emails from five other dudes who are represented by agents that the team trusts and has relationships with. You don't have an agent. So you got five guys who they seen in person, five guys who are represented by agents and who have. And then they got five other guys who have pro experience playing in Europe in the same country that you're trying to get a job in. So they got way more trust with these guys that they saw in person and the guys that came from agents and the guys who already play in the league that they already know can play because they seen them play. They seen them play in the games. And here's you. No agent. No, they haven't seen you in person. You haven't played in the league in Europe. They don't even know who you are. They never, they have no idea. You might not even be the person that's on the video. They don't even know. How do you think you're going to get ahead of those other 15 players? Now, is it possible? I mean, anything's possible, right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's impossible for you to get your name to the top of that pile over 15 other guys who have 
way more chance of getting a deal simply because the team is more familiar with them for different reasons. But if you really think about what I'm saying here, I want you to understand this is exactly how it works. When a team is trying to decide to sign a player, this is the way that they look. They say, all right, who are the players who we seen, who we have seen play? Like, but they played against our team in the past, but they're a free agent right now. We might be interested in it. First, they're going to get a list of those guys. Then they're going to say, who are the agents that we know, who we know are good for sending us this type of player? Let's call them and see who they have on their roster who might be interested, who's a free agent. They're going to get a list of players from there. Then they're going to say, who are the players that we have gone out and scouted in our own travels? Maybe we sent the guy to a, an exposure camp somewhere, maybe in Europe, maybe in the United States. Or we sent the guy to go watch some other teams play and we saw some players of note that we're interested in. Who are those players that we like? They're going to get a list of players from there. By the time they put those three lists together, they all, and, oh, here's another thing they're going to ask. They're going to say, who were the players that we were watching in the NCAA last season that just graduated from D1 or maybe D2? D1 or D2 who are really good players who we know are not going to make the NBA and they're going to be available to play in Europe. Who are those players? Let's get a list of them too. So by the time they get those four lists of players, those players that they saw in person on scouting missions, players from college, players that came directly from agents, and players who played in the league last year who they know are good. All right, you know how many players is going to be on that list just going off of these four questions? You're looking at 40 to 60 players just off those lists. And they only got one job they need to fill. They're looking at a list of 40 to 60 guys before, and they got to go through all those and narrow it down to pick one. And you, you didn't just come out the NCAA. You don't have an agent. You didn't play in the league last year. They didn't see you personally. Nobody from the team saw you personally on a scouting mission. And you think just because you sent them an email with your YouTube link that they're going to sign you? Probably not. Now, again, I'm not telling you don't do it. I'm just giving you the information. Whether you do it or not is your choice because your time is the most valuable asset you have. So if you want to utilize your time going after that, trying to win the lottery, you might win the lottery. All right? If you win the lottery, then you make a video. You tell everybody how it happened. But if you don't win the lottery, don't say that nobody told you that the lottery is, for the most part, a donation. All right? and the lottery, the actual lottery in the United States, when you buy those little tickets and the Powerball, what you're really doing is making a donation All right, because most of the time you ain't going to win. So I'm just letting y'all know what it is, but I need to make sure I answer this question. If I contact the team directly, is this a way that I could actually get a job? Now, could you contact the team and get a job? If you depend on the level of team that you reach out to, if you reach out to a team that's at a, a lower level team, like some country, not every country has so many levels. Some countries only have two levels of leagues. But some countries might have like 10 or 20 levels, like Spain or Germany, for example. You got teams that go all the way down. Look. I haven't played basketball. I haven't played a 5-on-5 basketball game in five years, literally five years. I could go and play, and there's some levels in Germany that I could go play right now and do something. I could score 20 points in a game like tonight and some levels in Germany. I'm saying that not to trash Germany because Germany has some high-level teams too. Don't sleep. But there are so many levels. There are levels down there due to work at you know, the train station from 9 to 5, and then they go play in a basketball league, and technically it's a league. I don't think they get paid, but you understand what I'm saying. So depending on the level that you're looking at, a team could be interested. They could say, yeah, you can come play with us, but we can't pay you, number one. We can't give you any food, no meals, number two. And we can't even give you a place to stay, but you can play with us. If you're in the country, you in town, all right, here's the game. The game's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You want to play? Yeah, sure. So understand that there are so many levels in some countries, not every country. In a couple of countries, there are so many levels of teams yeah, you can get on to this really uh, super lower level team. I'm talking eight, ten levels of leagues down. You might be able to get on a team like that by contacting the team directly. But you would have to take care of all your own accommodations. That's not really a professional team. I remember when I was reaching out to teams. Y'all gotta understand, I started playing ball in 2005. So back then it was a little bit different than it is now. Everybody wasn't on the internet. It wasn't as ubiquitous. It wasn't so mainstream to just send contacts and direct, directly messaging teams and things like that. So when I would try to do that, sometimes I would get responses from teams. A lot of times, that I, a lot of times I didn't, but there were like a 5% of the time I would actually get a response. But the response wasn't always like, hey, you're a great player. Let's sign you. No. The team would just respond, like acknowledging that they got my message, but that didn't mean anything was going to actually pop off. And most of the time, nothing popped off, as I told you all in the previous video. But I had a team reach out, reach back to me once, and I actually spoke to the dude on the phone. And he was like, yeah, you can call me. And I called him. I forget what country he was in, but I didn't sign with this team. That's why I don't remember much about him. But he said, 
Dre, uh, we like what you got here. I sent them my video. We like what you got here. And look, we would be happy to have you on the team, but we don't have a professional uh, structure. We don't have a professional infrastructure here. And I didn't know what he meant. So I asked him for clarification. And he said, what I mean is we don't, our team is not set up to take care of an import player. Like you're from the United States. So we don't have a setup to put you in an apartment. We don't have a budget to pay for your flight. We don't have the money to give you three meals a day or even one meal a day. We don't have any of that set up. The only thing we have that could help you is that we do have a team. We do play in games and we got a uniform we can give you, but we don't have any of the other stuff that you would need. So you would actually what you're looking for, Dre. And this is what he was explaining to me is you're looking for a team with a professional infrastructure. We're not that. And this was like a lower level team. And I don't even remember what league it was. But I'm explaining that to you to make sure you understand that, yes, you could contact the team and they would welcome you, but they might not be able to provide any of the things financially that you would need. And I'm not just talking about a salary, but again, to fly you in, to pay for your meals, to give you a place to stay, all of those things cost money. That money doesn't go in your pocket, but it's because of you that they have to spend that money. That's part of the investment that a team makes in you. So you got to make sure that that team that you're contacting even has the possibility to do that. So how would you know that? Well, one easy way to know that is just look at their roster. Do they have any Americans on the team? Do they have any players who are not from that country on the roster? If they do, go look at look up that player as best you can and look at that player's resume. Has that player played in different countries in Europe? If yes, then okay, then you might have a winner right there. Now, can you get in touch with that team? Probably not because I just told you how teams look for import players. Now, if that player hasn't played anywhere else, they're from a different country, but that's the only place they've ever played is there. That might be, that may be something different. That might be a person who just lives in that country. Like, look, I could move to, oh, what's the country? I could move to France right now and just live in France and do my business from France, right? I could make my YouTube videos and write my books and do my podcasting and all my stuff. I could do it all from France, just live in France. Instead of living in America, I live in France. I could contact the team in the, the fifth division in France and say, hey, can I play for y'all? And they can say, yeah, I'll go play for them. In the same city that I live in, technically I'm playing overseas, but is that really the professional structure? Probably not. Are they going to pay me? Probably not. Are they going to pay for my apartment? No. Are they going to be able to pay for meals? Maybe they could give me meals. That's pretty much the only thing they would do. They're not paying for my flight. They're not paying for my living expenses to move to France. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I think I've explained this well enough. So to answer the question generally, can you contact the team and get on? Technically, yes, but probably not the kind of job that you're looking for. For the kind of job that you are looking for, I suggest that you get this book, which is the Overseas Basketball Blueprint. This is a 237 page book that I wrote to help you avoid all the, the trials and tribulations that I went through trying to make my professional basketball career happen. I was a D3 walk on in college and didn't even have any connections to get on overseas. I went and made a nine year career out of it. I wrote this book to help you avoid all the mistakes that I made along the way. And I'm gonna give you this book free. I've already paid for the book. You can look it up on Amazon. I charge 30 bucks for this book on Amazon. I've charged as much as 50 bucks for this book on Amazon, but you don't have to pay that. All you gotta do is take care of the shipping. I will ship this book to you anywhere in the world you live. Even if you are not from America, this book will give you the information that you need. This information is useful for any player trying to start a career playing ball overseas. The link to this book is balloverseas.com. The link is down there in the video description. There's also a link to a free PDF that you could download to your phone right now. It's called 46 Things You Need to Know About Playing Basketball Overseas. You can download to that, that to your phone right now. That's free. Then you order this book. I'll ship this to you in the mail. This is free. And this video right here is free. Listen, I'm giving you everything you need to play ball overseas. And I want to let you know, in case you didn't know, there is no job you could possibly have in your life that is better than playing basketball overseas. All right, there's no job that's more fun than traveling the world, seeing places that you never would have seen, playing a sport for a living and getting paid for it. All right, that's the most fun job you could ever have. I'm an entrepreneur right now and I love being an entrepreneur, but it ain't more fun than playing basketball overseas. That's just a fact, I'm telling you straight up. So get this book, ballgoverseas.com is where you get it. The link is down there and y'all know what it is. Stay tuned for more videos. I got a lot more coming. Work on your game. Dre all day.